Welcome back to Coding Kaiju. My name is Diego. Today, we're going to talk about recursion. So, what is recursion? Recursion is when a function calls itself. So, what does that mean? I think the easiest way to understand recursion is to jump right in with an example. So, let's look at palindromes. Palindromes are words that are spelled the same way forward as they are backwards. If you were to reverse the word, it would be spelled the same way. Some examples are noon, level, mom, and race car. It's the same letters forwards as it is backwards. So, if you wanted to determine if a word was a palindrome, you'd probably start by looking at the first letter. Uh, in this case, it's R in race car. And compare that to the last letter, R. And from there, you would work your way in. You compare the next two letters, A, A, C, C, and in the middle is E. And you would continue that process until you found a mismatch or you reach the center. So on this example, we reach the center. So we know that the word race car is in fact a palindrome. And a recursive solution in code for this would behave in a similar fashion. So let's write one in GDScript. All right, so let's define a new function, func, and we'll call it is palindrome and pass it in a parameter string which is of type string and it'll return a boolean so when writing a recursive function the first thing you want to do is determine the base case the base case is going to be the most basic, the most simple possible situation that your function could encounter. Basically, what's the most simple string that could possibly be passed in? Well, that would probably be either an empty string or maybe a string with a single letter. Um, in this case, a single letter would be a palindrome because if you reversed it, you know, well, there's really nothing to reverse. It's the same string. It's an identical string. Same thing with an empty string. If you reversed it, it's an identical string. So let's write that for our base case. So we'll say if string dot length is less than or equal to one, we want to return true. Okay, so now that we've gone beyond our base case, let's actually start comparing the first and last letter of the word. So to do that, we're gonna write an elif. So we're gonna get the first letter using the substring method. So starting at the first index and of length one, that'll give us the first character. If that does not equal the last letter, which we can get by calling the substring method again, this time starting at the last character, which would be the string length, minus one. And if those two letters do not match, then we know that the word is not a palindrome. Now, this next part is where the magic happens. So, if the string length is not less than or equal to 1, and the letters do match, then we're going to continue. We are going to have the function call itself, that same function. But instead of passing the full string, the full word, we're going to pass it the substring. We're going to chop off that first letter. And 
chop off that last letter and pass that into the new function call. All right, so I've gone ahead and added some comments to our code to explain more about what's going on at each step. And for this example, we're gonna use the word race car, the string race car. So we're gonna pass in the string race car and the length is not less than or equal to one. And R does equal R, the first and last character. It does equal, so we're gonna continue. And since we don't really have a return value yet, this function, the state of this function will be saved to the stack, otherwise known as the call stack. So we'll call this same function again, this time with the first and last letters removed, and the same thing will happen. It does not satisfy our base case. It's not less than or equal to one. The first and last letters do match. So again, we're gonna save the state of this function call to the stack and recurse again. And same thing here. Our string length is not less than or equal to one. The first and last letters do match. So we're gonna recurse again. And here we finally reached our base case. Our string is E, which does satisfy our base case. And we're finally gonna return an actual value. We're gonna return true. And that true is gonna be returned up the chain. It's gonna be propagated to the previous function call that was saved. And this one is gonna return that same true back up the call, back up the chain, until it's propagated all the way to the very first call. And that will be the value that's returned from this initial function call. Okay, now I wanna talk a little bit more about the call stack. So the call stack can only be as big as your computer's memory, or otherwise how much RAM your computer has. And every time you make a recursive function call, that call is saved to the stack. And so every time you recurse, the stack is growing and it's taking up more of your computer's memory. What happens if you recurse too many times? What happens if you never reach that base case? Well, in that situation, you get what's known as stack overflow. I'm sure you're familiar with the website stackoverflow.com. It's a pretty common error if you accidentally write a piece of code that recurses infinitely. Now we can actually write infinitely recursive function in Godot. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And I'm just gonna call it a recursive function. Pass it an argument of num. And all it's gonna do is return itself with num plus one. And you know what, let's actually print out each iteration. And we'll call it here in the ready function and pass it zero. And so now when we run this, we can see right here. Stack overflow, stack size of 1,024. And that's because Godot actually limits how big the stack can get on function calls. And by default, it's 1,024. And we can actually change that. Uh, if you wanna change the stack size, go ahead and just go open up the project settings up here. Go to debug. Go to the settings and right here in GDScript, the max call stack. But you shouldn't have to change this. If, if you ever do end up reaching this limit, I would reevaluate your implementation rather than changing this. All right, so one more thing I wanna talk about before we end this video is recursive functions versus iterative. So iterative functions would be for loops a for loop or a while loop. And we could actually write an is palindrome function using a for loop. It, you know, it'd be pretty similar. You start, compare the first and last characters in the string and work your way towards the center. 
So as a general rule, iterative functions are always going to run faster than recursive functions. Recursive functions have that overhead of adding, saving, you know, the state of the function in memory to the call stack. And that takes time, whereas iterative functions can just continue their operations on the CPU at a very high speed. So why would you use recursive functions at all? Well, for one thing, recursive functions are very clean. They make for very clean code, very easy to read. And another advantage of recursive functions is that you don't have to know how many times the function will recurse. As long as you implement the base case correctly, it'll recurse as much as it needs to and return the result. Whereas when you're writing a for loop, um, you'll have to know exactly how many times you want the function to iterate. As a general rule, if I don't know how many times a function needs to iterate to reach to solve the problem, then I'll use a recursive function. All right, we're gonna stop there. Hopefully you learned about recursion and recursive functions and how they work and how to use them. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.